Hello and welcome back. This time we're going to talk about digital inputs. Last time we talked about analog outputs. So the output side is covered. Digital outputs, analog outputs. Now we want to talk about digital inputs. And we are again, like in the videos about the Arduino base curves, we are again using a little switch here. This one. This is the one we are using, this little switch. Huh? Any switch will do. Huh? And then I also use my LED again to see if there is something on with the corresponding 220 ohms and my Arduino, of course. Huh? So, plug the switch in. Huh? Bunch of cables I have also. So, ground, set it to ground. Here is my LED. Here is my resistor. No, so. Get eine. Here is which one do I, I will use again. Output number two for my LED. Okay. And my switch I will put to general purpose I open number hmm, use four. Four is good. Yeah. And then of course I intend to use a pull-up, yeah, internal pull-up, so I have to connect the other side of the switch to the ground. That's it. That should do the trick. Yeah. Here I can then use it as input, yeah? pin number 4 will be input, and pin number 2 I can display something if I like to. Connect it to my computer, pin pin it in. Good, good. Let's come to the coding. Huh? Okay, so let's start with the coding. Of course. Of course, we will do this coding uh, exactly as base. We will use the things like we used last time, last video. Huh? Okay, this was the thing last time. I will save it under a new name, uh, just to be sure. 46, this is then. And then we will have in OO. Digital in object oriented. Save. By the way, quite good practices. If you defining such uh, methods, eh, they should give something back. If there is nothing given back, you maybe should add their void, eh, so that the people know you don't you do this on purpose. Eh? There's nothing is returned by this function. Yeah. Of course, we have to do this here also. So the set is a void, the reset is returning void, so nothing, make is returning nothing, and analog output will also returning nothing. Mm -hmm. See if it's still compiling. Takes a little while. Uh, yes, still compiling, so I did not forget anywhere to void. If you forget somewhere, return type, it says, Oh, I cannot find this this function because it's a different type, you know. A, a function with the return type void is another type than a function with no return. This is not a bad idea. So, let's add a new class. Class digital input and we also uh, add them from public inherit public pubic <laughs> public uh, pink class from our pink class of course we will have here the constructors yeah, but this time they are called digital 
input and of course the uh, public and I want to have status and there the return should be a bool if it's on or off huh? status okay we know there are two different input types yeah? there is input and input pull up so it would be beneficial yeah, if we could handle this in our class. Yeah. So I will add here another parameter. Pool, pull up. Okay. I will add here another parameter. If I want to use a pull up, internal pull up or not. Yeah. And I can even, now I have, now I have to specify it. Yeah. But if I'm running here, true, then I do not have to specify this parameter. The default value is true. If I do not specify when calling this method, it would be true and we would be using input pull up. I think that's a good choice. However, we need to store this inside somewhere where we will see. So we using a private part, I will use protected protected attribute pull up pull pull in we store it simply inside our class control T everything looks decent great okay. now let's come to the coding let's come to the coding so switch to pin CPP I will simply use here this digital output, copy, copy and paste, copy and paste, digital, copy and paste, <laughs> copy and paste. Oh, this is the wrong file. Uh, this I have not to do here anymore. Why is this still in here? Of course, I don't have to do this because I'm calling the pin class anyway. Hmm. What have I? Of course, pin mode must be in there. Man, good hands. Getting confused, huh? Okay, digital input, pin, pin number will be set. And now, of course, I have also to copy this stuff here. Mm -hmm. Now it's the same. I will simply make it this way. Then it looks a little bit more, more decent. Mm -hmm. Also here, I will do it like this. So we can simply use the next column. No issue, no issue. And then it would not get that long. Yeah? Save. Okay, that's it. I'm calling ping class input pull up. And now, if pull up, then pin mode shall be input pull up. Okay, else pin mode shall be only input. Good, and this pull up shall be pull up. I will store whatever was given to me. Like I said, I do not have to give this since it has a default value. If I only enter pin number, then it will be input pull up by default. Okay, so this is good. This is good. And now let's code the status. So we have a pool. Uh, and the status method uh, if it was a pull up 
this is why I stored it. If this pull up, then I will return return uh, not digital read, yeah, because then if the input is actually set, yeah, it will be zero volts. Yeah, digital read uh, this pin number. Good. Yeah? Else. return and only digital read. Mm -hmm. Let's see if it's compiling or if I make somewhere ooh expert is before LED why is this? Streichpunkt, ja, Semikolon. Okay, works. You see, this was a really confusing error message. I forgot a semicolon in another in another uh, file because I'm reading it in here. Yeah? Here, here the semicolon is missing and he puts out an error here. Because this would be the next line where the semicolon would say, hey, 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 what's this? Semicolon, no semicolon. Huh? <laughs> yeah, you could search quite a long time for such things. Yeah. I was lucky. No, I was not lucky. I knew, of course. Okay, so I have a class digital input. Good, good. LED bin. Uh, this is now where I've put it to. Uh, and I do not need this anymore. I define a button bin. I placed it to four. Uh, I at this I will use a digital out, digital output, and now I use a digital input. Uh, this is put, put, a red button, button, and this must be button pin. And now I could write here true because I want to have it, I want to have it input pull up, or I write here false, then I only have it as input, or I simply write nothing, then it's also input put out because it has a default value. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. And here my program is simply if put on dot state LED dot set yeah, else LED dot reset. No, this should do the trick. Every time I press the button, the LED should be lit. Yeah. Whoa, short program. Yeah. Let's see what's going on if I download this. Nothing. Yeah. State status. Sta even read, huh? you know, there is no member state. Did you mean status? Wow. These compilers, they are really working well. Huh? Okay, now it's working. Upload, upload. What's happening? Let's see. Pressy? Yeah, boy. It's working. <laughs> you see, object oriented input object oriented input object oriented input object oriented input uh, no everybody <laughs> of course you can say hey where's the benefit there is no benefit for this and actually you are kind of right 
Actually, you're kind of right. I mean, uh, yeah, I, we, we would be able to produce this with much less code. Much less, more or less. Yeah? We would produce this easily, easily. Yeah? However, uh, now it's object oriented and we want to have a little bit more benefit let's call it yeah so we want to have uh more more stuff added to our or we can add more stuff to our to our function yeah? uh, and we will do this now do you remember do you remember the the topic of the uh switch of this speicherschaltung yeah where we switched on and off. It was not that easy. It would be beneficial if we could recognize a trigger. So if we are pressing the button, now we press the button, now we get information. Hey, right now, button was pressed. This would be actually good. How can we do this? How we can this be achieved? So. For sure, we have in our digital input, we have to store somehow the old status yeah, to see if a new button press was there. Yeah? Old status. Yeah. Old status. Yeah. How do I initialize this old status? Yeah. This old status yeah, equals, I will simply read it. I will simply read it from the digital input. Huh? See? What is the old status? Look, if I'm initialized, look what is the input. Aha, passed. This is the old status. Okay. This is the old status. Now, we should have a method that is called regularly. Huh? You see, hey, look, I have something changed. Hey, look, I have something changed. Hey, look. So I will call this. Uh, We'll call this uh, check. Check, 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 check. Inside this check, I'm comparing. What do I compare? If uh, this status now I know somebody pressed yeah. and not this old status. Yeah. This means last time it was checked, yeah. the old status was not there. Yeah. What shall then be happening? Oh, we will think. Of, we shall not forget to store the new old status. Now I'm using twice, twice this function. So I'll use a local, a local variable. Every, every time I use it twice a function, I will store this in a variable. I don't know if this rule is very wise, but I do it that way. Yeah? So, if the current state is on and the old state was not on, something shall be happening. But what? Hmm? We could return one, or else return not, not, not nothing. Yeah. Yes. However, then this function shall be checked, shall, shall be called trigger on or something like this. But we could also add a so-called callback function. Okay, a callback function is a function which is called in case of an event. It would be nice that we can specify a function if the if the button is freshly pressed, yeah, execute this function, please, and we can change this function in our main program. Okay, 
the only thing we have to tell the object for this yeah, is an address of the function. So actually, we need to store an address of the function. So the position in the memory of the function. You know, there was the index or the, the index pointer, the the, the command pointer, yeah? and the command pointer shall point to the next instruction, instruction pointer, yeah? to the next instruction. And if I have an address of the next instruction, yeah? it's enough for me. I don't need to know exactly what is in there. I just need the pointer address of the function. Okay. How is this working? How is this working? I define here a protected attribute where we can hold this pointer. Uh, void callback function on. Hmm. This would be the callback function. Uh, then this would be already a method in here. However, in C++, a pointer is marked with a star. Now it's a pointer to this function. I have to group this a little bit. Now it's correct. Here, inside this attribute, I'm storing the address of a function of this type. The type of the function is no parameters here and return void. The name of the function does not matter. Okay. How do I get this function in there? Huh? I will have to use a new uh, method. Huh? Void add callback function on. And then I have to, of course, hand over a function pointer, callback function. This would be, this would add the address, this shall add the address. Okay. Good. Let's code this on the other side. Save, save often, save early. Zack, zack. Let's code, let's code this here. Word. Digital input double point double point double point double point <laughs> okay and here we don't have to do nothing more than store this this cb function shall be this one good and here we are calling. Huh? We are calling this function. Huh? This should be enough. Huh? Of course. Also, not the CB function, of course. We are calling this one, the stored one. So in case the button press is new, we are calling the CB function. This should not do any harm to our current... Oh, it's compiling. I always want to know if this is compiling or not. This should not have done any harm to here. No, still working. So we will add now... Uh, here in my main program, I will add such function. Yeah. I will call this was a void. Yeah. Callback. I call it my my callback, and it has no nothing, nothing. Ah, yeah. uh, what shall happen? I will simply put a line. Serial dot begin. 9600 and here I write print
button was just pressed. Button was just pressed. And I have to add this to my button. Button. And now I have forgotten how I type this. Add CB function. And now how to get the address of this function? The address is an AND. The address operator. I will hand over the address of this my callback function. And of course, I have to call a, a button dot check huh? regularly. Huh? Check it, check it, check it. Try if it's compiling. Open serial monitor. Upload. Where's the serial monitor gone? Here. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Uh huh. <laughs> it's coming. It's working. Okay, it's working. We see. But there are quite a lot of lines appearing. Why is that? Huh? Why is that? Huh? We talked once about this. Yeah? We talked about this. Uh, this is because this switch here, this is bouncing. Yeah? It's not on, off. It is bouncing a little bit. Okay? So what can we do about this? We make a short delay. We're not checking every microsecond yeah? because then we see all those bounces. Yeah? We are checking just every 10 milliseconds. Upload. Let's see if this is now working better. Clear output. Let's see. Ah, still not perfect. Well, it seems this button is quite a quite. I have also got a little bit cheeky contact, but now it's working well. Every time I press the button, it's really calling, it's really calling uh, this callback function. Good, okay? So, again, we learned something. Yeah? We learned how to add a callback function. Now it has a benefit. Now you can try to add a callback function when you release the button again. Yeah? And you can also try to make this this uh, Speicherschaltung. So if I press the button once, yeah? it shall that the LED shall be lit. Boom. Yeah? If you release the button, it, stay, it should stay lit. Yeah? And if you press the button a second time, boom, the LED should go off. Yeah? So it's the on-off button. Yeah? And you store the status inside of a program. We've done this before in, in the Arduino base cars, yeah, but now let's try it with object-oriented. Yes, and this is how it should look like. Yeah? Press the button, lit, press the button a second time, off. Yeah? And this, object-oriented. Tick, 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 tick. Okay, so these are object-oriented things. Yeah? Next time we will hear, I mean, we did use this include and so on, and usually we are using this include also to use uh, libraries. Next time we will hear the difference between a library and our stuff here. Let's see if we can make our uh, program, our H and CPP files, a library, what we have to do for this. This then will be in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.